It's all about finding balance in life, right? So somewhere in between me trying to speed build a computer in 17 minutes and it taking me five attempts to get my time down to that point and me being like sweating at the end of it and not having any time to give you guys any instructions or insight about what I'm doing and taking six hours to swap out a motherboard in my personal rig, there's gotta be a happy medium and that is exactly what today's build is all about. This, my friends, is the Happy Medium Machine. Now, our goal was to build a respectable gaming rig for the modest price of 500 US dollars, not including peripherals and monitor and all that kind of stuff. Now, admittedly, we did go a little bit over our budget. We ended up closer to the 500 and $80 range, but there are definitely some places where you could, you know, trim a little bit of fat in order to hit that price point and then easily upgrade later. Like for example, we did include a hard drive so that we can actually install a decent library of games on it, assuming we're playing modern AAA titles, some of which are 100 plus gigs per game, but you could scrap that you could install and remove your games as you play them and then just kind of wait to build up some budget to upgrade your storage down the line. So we're still calling it a $500 gaming rig and we are gonna get started building it right now at a happy medium pace. So we're not gonna speed build, but I'm also not gonna take like an hour to build this computer. And it's brought to you by Ridge Wallet wants to redefine the wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. Check out how they can help keep your wallet bulged down and use our offer code LINUS to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. And we're back. Yes, that's, uh, that's the way that we do that. All right, so the first thing we need to decide is whether we're gonna go with the windowed or non-windowed version of the MG120G from Cougar. Rawr. Uh, which one's the windowed one? The G. The G? All right, we're gonna go with the non-windowed one because this build is all about modesty and doing things that actually make sense. If you are spending $500 on a gaming rig, you should be saving the $5 or $10 delta between the windowed version of the case and the non-windowed version of the case, and you should be spending that on a graphics upgrade or a CPU upgrade. Something that you're kind of stuck with for an extended period of time versus something that can be easily upgraded down the line, like for example, storage or system memory. Now I took a lot of flack when we did a budget build recently, configuring it with a single stick of memory with the intention, of course, of upgrading to dual channel later. People said, hey, you know, the performance sucks. Um, but I'm of the mind that any performance that I give up today, like let's say I save, you know, 5% of my budget by going with a single stick of memory, um, but I lose 5% of my performance. That's a trade-off that doesn't cost me anything in the long term. It's just sort of like, deferring that performance and cost to a later time. I fully understood that that was not the ideal configuration and that dual channel makes a big difference to system performance these days. It's just a matter of whether that's a system performance compromise that I'm making that is going to cost me more down the line or whether it's one that I'm making that I can just say, hey, you know what? My performance isn't enough today. I'm gonna to go to the computer store and buy another stick of memory and put it in my system because you know I've saved up my, uh, my lunch money. My parents gave me lunch money and I decided not to buy lunch and I just stashed it so I could buy cool stuff that I want, not that I'm speaking from experience. Let's go ahead and install a CPU. So for our motherboard, we went with the ASRock B450M Pro. This is just such a great balance between performance and cost. It's MATX, so you don't get some of the expansion that you might expect from a full-size board. You've only got three PCI Express slots, but let's face it, when you're using a B450 board, you don't have the same degree of chipset features anyway, and an MATX board, I feel, is a really, really good compromise there. So we've got our socket AM4, we've still got four memory slots, so we can load this puppy up. We've got two M.2s, uh, and then, of course, the PCI Express slots, and actually a pretty reasonable mix of I.O. with six USB 3 Plus ports. 
only gigabit ethernet. It's not until you step up to B550 that you're gonna start to see things like two and a half gig ethernet on these, uh, on these more value oriented boards. Let's go ahead and switch to our top down here. For our CPU, we've gone with a Ryzen 3 3100. This thing is just an outstanding balance of price to performance. And I know that we've said some things about it in the past, like that we don't think it makes necessarily the, uh, oh wait, no, sorry. I'm, I'm actually thinking of when we got slammed for a completely different video. Uh, yeah, the Ryzen 3100 is, we actually gave it an extremely positive review. The one thing that we did get criticized for recently about it is, yes, I know that you can step up. Okay, so you can step up to a 3300 and that does make a big difference to performance. But I still maintain that even if you're going to end up with a little bit of latency due to the 2CCX design of this one, it's at a certain price point not the kind of thing that you're going to notice when you're pairing it with a 1650 Super. That's something to bear in mind about the way that um, you typically benchmark hardware versus the way that people actually deploy it in the real world. If you want to pop in here, I'm just going to go ahead and install my CPU. Just lining up my diamond with the uh, little, you can see that little arrow on the edge of the board right there. We got the arrow. Yep. Nice. Thank you, David. So I've already got Floatplane chat being like, why not 3300X? Okay, all right. I just, I just talked through this. Not 3300X because I think that when you're trying to hit a price point, there are cases where, look, if you're pairing it with a 1650 Super, realistically, 3100 ain't, uh, ain't gonna be the, uh, the bottleneck in that system anyway. From a gaming standpoint, this is a gaming focused system. I think it's fine. Speaking of things that are just fine for cooling, we're going stock cooler. In fairness, like AMD stock coolers these days are actually pretty legit. Like they are literally double the mass of Intel's. I still remember when Intel did away with the copper plug down the middle of this style of heatsink that they've also used for many, many years. And uh, I, if I recall, could, we might have actually done, we either did a video benchmarking the difference between the, the new, I mean new and not improved, the new and not improved all aluminum version and the version that had the copper slug down the middle. In fact, you used to be able to see it through the fins back in the LGA 775 days. Like it kind of had like a, it was like a copper tube and then the aluminum fins were all attached to it around the outside. Um, we either did a video about it or uh, did some testing and uh, I just don't, I just don't get it. Like the amount of savings that Intel must have there, I don't see how it's worth it. AMD clearly doesn't see the point. So they still include decent coolers with their CPUs and I commend them for it. You're gonna need to take the oh, I am gonna need to take the, uh, the brackets off. All right, I'm gonna not put my thermal compound on and I'm gonna go ahead and just use this screwdriver that uh, I want you all to not worry about. Just don't worry about this screwdriver. You should have no worries in your mind about this screwdriver. Why are you guys being so worried about it? I just don't really get it. Everyone's stressing out, you know? I actually have been tempted to pick myself up a nice little utility belt or tool belt um, ever since I was doing a bunch of um, uh, like network cabling running in my attic and installing security cameras in my house, I've actually been doing a bunch of home upgrades and I found myself needing to carry, uh, here, let's uh, get correct thermal paste application up in here. We're just gonna do kind of a fat boy grain of rice here. Um, I found myself needing to carry like, you know, hammer, uh, drill, you know, crimp tool, side cutters, some RJ45 ends. Like it's gotten to the point where even my, my, stretchy, my stretchy Costco jeans just can't contain it all. Like look, I can, store, I can store an AMD stock cooler in my front pocket, but it's just, you know, it's not quite, it's not quite enough at a certain point. All right, let's go ahead and install this puppy. 
Uh, uh, you're good, David. Okay. I love, this is another thing that AMD slash AMD's partners don't cheap out on compared to Intel boards. I love that AMD, even on their consumer platform, still has a backplate. There have been boards that I've seen that have just the, these, uh, these plastic, uh, like these little plastic bracket things, and then they just use push pins to go through the board. But unless you're buying like some super random board on AliExpress or something, the vast majority of them have a backplate. And I just love coolers that mount with a proper metal backplate compared to ones that use plastic push pins. I've just seen such uh, terrible things happen in shipping. I mean, recently we had the PewDiePie Creeper PC get destroyed in shipping, even though everything was mounted with metal. Like that should give you some idea. I have seen systems come back after being shipped across the continent with a push pin style cooler. And it wasn't really stock coolers back in the day because this was when I was at NCIX. We didn't ship a lot of like custom systems with stock coolers. Um, so it was, uh, there was a particular Arctic cooling one. I wanna say like Freezer 7 or something like that. This is like way back in the day. Anyway, it used push pins and people kept configuring their systems with these things. And NCIX's philosophy was kind of like uh, the Burger King of custom computers, right? Like you have it your way, we'll build whatever you configure. So that thing was a great value because it was like 20 bucks and it was uh, like a tower cooler at a time when those were usually quite a bit more expensive than that. Um, so people kept configuring their systems with these bloody things and we'd configure them and I'd see these systems come back that looked like they had been kind of like picked up and drop kicked repeatedly down the length of a football field with this cooler having popped off and banging around inside the system. We're talking graphics cards that were like ripped out of the slot, but still screwed in back here. So the slot is just like, like gaping open. None of the pins are making contact. We're talking hard drives getting, getting knocked out and like putting, like not dense. I'm not talking dense. I'm talking like you can see through the PCB holes in the motherboard. I've just seen such, and you know, as someone who, especially at that time, you know, really had basically no money, right? Like I'm working as a sales rep at a computer store um, two days a week. I'm going to school at the same time. I, I pretty much had no money. Um, I like loved hardware. Like it was all that I lived and breathed. And just like seeing those things, actually traumatic. Like looking at, you know, a $3,000 gaming rig that's just, you know, SLI and this cooler came off and just like knocked both of the video cards out and they were banging around inside the case and like the power supply survived, it's still screwed in, but like the back of the case is now bent from the weight and it's scratched all over. Like, <sighs> just <laughs> had to steady myself, you know? Sorry, I said this stream wouldn't go on for too long. So let's go ahead and plug in our CPU fan here. So it's pretty typical these days and I just, man, ASRock has done such a great job of their budget boards. Come on in here, David. It's pretty typical these days on what used to be high-end boards, having a feature where you have two CPU headers, uh, one for the CPU fan, if you've got a conventional setup like this, and a second for if you've got an AIO and you've got sort of one connector for your fan or fans and then a second connector for your pump. Um, so you just wanna watch out, just watch the labeling because you'll usually have CPU fan uh, one, CPU fan two, or CPU fan and CPU fan opt. Yeah, so this one is labeled CPU fan two slash water pump. Unfortunately, ASRock in their infinite wisdom put the silk screen under this heat sink for the VRM, so you actually, VRMs, uh, you actually can't read it, but uh, it's probably in the manual as well. Uh, so that's it. Our CPU cooler is installamolated. Uh, King in the North, I've only been live for about uh, 20 minutes or something like that. Half an hour, half an hour, wait, what? I've been live for half an hour? We gotta build a computer here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're not installing an M.2 SSD today. We're gonna be going SATA. So we're pretty much done with the motherboard now that we've got, oh yeah, no, nope. we can go ahead and install our RAM. I love that in the time since AMD Ryzen launched, we've gone from DDR4, like 2400, 2666 being affordable to you can actually put 
DDR4 3200 RAM for not much more money in even like a $500 to $600 class gaming rig. It's great because even though the performance delta might not be huge in some applications going from uh, you know, 2666 to 3200, some things it will be big. And I, for one, love getting the most for my money. That's what it's all about is not leaving performance on the table unless you absolutely have to. And it wasn't that long ago that in order to hit this kind of price point, uh, we would often tell people, hey, yeah, you're probably better off just getting a single stick of RAM today to give yourself more room to upgrade in the future because that way, if you have enough money for, let's say, eight gigs of RAM, instead of buying two four gig sticks, which is about the same price typically, and then limiting yourself to 16 gigs of total upgradability, you can buy a single eight gig then a single 8 gig, you get your extra performance, and that gives you up to 32 gigs before you have to start you know, throwing things away or flipping them on Craigslist in order to uh, get back some of your budget. All right, let's go ahead and open up our case. I'm just going to open up the Super Chats here. Uh, best thing that came out of these live streams are... Oh, I'm glad you guys like the live streams, because like, honestly, it's a lot of fun for me too. I actually kind of enjoy just like building computers. I find it relaxing. Um, but I'm at the point now where I don't need any more computers. It's like, what a struggle, you know? It's, it's, it's a bummer. I just, I just want to build computers. I mean, that, that's ultimately why I got the job at the computer store. I wanted to be a tech, but um, I understand now why they didn't allow it. I simply didn't have the relevant experience at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I get it. So they put me in sales but I would still hang out in the tech room whenever it was slow in the store. And sometimes Andrew, I don't know if you're out there, Andrew, you're a good dude though. Sometimes Andrew would let me, uh, would let me work on some of the systems. And he was willing if I made a mistake, which I don't think I ever did, but he was also a super nice guy and he might just not have told me if I made a mistake and he had to cover for me, but he would, uh, he'd help me out if, uh, if, I, if I made a mistake putting something together. I ended up being really good at sales, though. Go, go figure. Gift a gab. Um, so I ended up spending most of my time doing that, even if I did want to want to work as a tech. It's probably just as well because the transition from sales to the business side of things was a lot easier than I think the transition from uh, technician to the business side of things, and that ended up being a really good career move for me. All right. So pretty simple case here, MATX, really compact, single included fan, that should be enough cooling for our configuration. This is just a Ryzen 3100 and a uh, 1650 Super. It's amazing to me though, how far budget cases have come. On the one hand, I lament sometimes the loss of the cases of old. I mean, we're talking cases that weighed like 20 pounds on their own. You know, they've got, they've got cross braces everywhere. Like you grab onto these things and you're like, wow, there is no flex in this whatsoever. Whereas I've seen modern cases that you basically have to screw the motherboard in in order to give the case structural rigidity. You know what I mean? Um, so I lament that sometimes, but the number of features that you can get in a budget case these days, where's my, uh, do I have a price, uh, like a price list for this thing? on the Trello card. All right, uh, there we go. Like how much did we pay for this puppy? Uh, $50. 50 bucks, love it. And even the non-tempered glass version does have um, just at least, you know, like a see-through front panel. It looks kind of gamery. I'm not a huge fan of restricting airflow in the front of a case like this, but again, for this kind of build, it's not a major concern to me because you've got this Again, magnetically filtered, absolutely love it. You've got this magnetically filtered top that is going to end up being used as an intake even if that wasn't the original intent because we're gonna end up with um, probably negative, negative airflow or negative pressure inside this case. If I was building this for myself, what I would probably actually do, as crazy as it might sound, is, you know what, let's just do it. I'm going to, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say, this is, this is what I would do. So remember, I'm someone who's trying to hit a price point here. I don't have a bunch of money to spend on extra fans. It's shocking how expensive 
fans are when they're not included with your case or with your AIO liquid cooler if you want anything that's decent quality, right? So I would probably pull this out and I would throw it in the top of the case where I have a nice filtered intake and I'm gonna put it towards the front so it's blowing air right down where the graphics card is going to be. Oops. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put it right here, just reconfigure my included fan. Like there's no real reason that it has to be in the back like that, other than that's the Intel ATX specification. Ooh, fun fact. I was reading an article on um, Anantech the other day about a new power supply standard that apparently, uh, I think it's Intel championing it, where basically we're gonna do away with the 24 pin and we're gonna do away with 3.3 volt and 5 volt all together coming out of the power supply. So the, uh, the computer power supply is just gonna handle AC, so that's your uh, 120 volt to 240 volt AC, uh, to 12 volt DC, and then splitting out 12 volt into 3.3 and 5 volt is gonna be done on the motherboard level. Um, I'm really interested to get my hands on it, and I just got a shipping notification. So I actually am going to have both a motherboard and power supply for this new standard coming fairly soon, and I'm really excited to check it out. The main, the main uh, play here is just uh, simplifying the power supply and improving efficiency, because DC to DC conversion is, um, more efficient than AC to DC conversion. Now a lot of modern power supplies actually do that internally anyway. So they'll just um, uh, do DC to DC conversion from 12 volt to three and a half and five volt anyhow. Um, but presumably there's some kind of benefit to moving that onto the motherboard and I look forward to talking to some of the engineers who are working on it to find out exactly what those reasons are and bringing that knowledge to y'all. Okay, so that's where I wanna put my fan. This is powered by either three pin or four pin Molex. So I'm just gonna rip this Molex connector off because Molex connectors suck, what year is it? And we're gonna plug the three pin into the motherboard when we get a chance. Let's go ahead and install our IO shield. Uh-oh. Where's my IO shield? Oh, there it is. And I never miss these when I get to work with motherboards that have them included but it's also a small price to pay for, you know, spending oftentimes, you know, 20, 30, 40, $50 less on your motherboard. <laughs> I've been for a long time an advocate of getting the motherboard that has the features you need, um, as opposed to worrying about, you know, every, every theoretical, you know, mad gain you're gonna get from some kind of more robust VRM solution. Uh, it's like, yes, if you're a professional overclocker, you're going you know, dry ice, liquid nitrogen, or whatever the case may be, there's absolutely a benefit to your you know, $400 motherboard or whatever. Um, but if you're someone that's just gonna basically say, okay, I'm gonna enable multi-core enhancement, I'm gonna put some decent cooling on this thing, make sure I've got good airflow over it, um, I'm just, I'm just not convinced that it's worth the, A, the money, and B, the extra time. Um, we've actually got a really fun video coming soon where Anthony and I went head to head in what we're calling the Tech Triathlon. You were there, what do you think? Fun competition? Oh yeah. Okay, so uh, Dave, David helped us film that one. And what it is, is building a gaming PC, overclocking said gaming PC, and then actually gaming on said gaming PC. And uh, I can tell you guys a fair bit about it now, uh, even though it's uh, not something that we're ready to release yet. If you wanna come close up here, I'll just show people where I do need to put some motherboard standoffs in. This one doesn't have them all pre-installed, unfortunately, just, actually it's kind of a weird setup that it's got because it's got the four ITX ones and then one MATX one over here, but not this one and not anything over here. So it's, you know, it's kind of bizarre. Um, so it's a timed event and we go from 
building a computer, obviously, as fast as we can, the faster you can do it, the better, to overclocking the system. And every percent of extra performance you get gives you a 2% time bonus overall. And then we have to uh, play the first level of Doom Eternal on, I think it was Nightmare or Ultraviolence? Ultraviolence. On Ultraviolence. And neither Anthony nor I has played that game extensively. And I can, okay, one thing I will spoil a little bit is that's definitely going to show in my performance in the gaming segment. But uh, one of the things that I was sort of, uh, that I thought would be an interesting takeaway from that video is, you know, how long, aside from the extra money that you spend on, you know, tunable components, how much do you have to pay yourself to sit around and tune them um, compared to if you had just gone, okay, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a side hustle and treat myself to something a little bit faster in the first place. Um, it's just, it's been a very interesting calculation for me ever since, really ever since I joined the workforce because PC hardware choices for me in the past, uh, or when I was like a student, when I was a kid, were more about, uh, you know, what's the, what's the cool new shiz that I want to play with temporarily because I would usually buy it secondhand from someone with buyer's remorse, like while well, it's still current hardware. Um, and then I would flip it right when the first rumblings, like the first rumors start of a new generation coming. And then I would just go back to like, you know, a PCI graphics card for a few weeks while I wait for the new product to come out. And then I would take the money that I got back, I find someone with buyer's remorse and so on and so forth. So effectively I had cash flow tied up in my computer but I never really actually spent any money on it, if you understand what I mean. Um, anyway, as I, as I moved into adulthood, I started seeing, like I, basically I had, what I had was uh, time, but no money. And then as I got a job and moved into adulthood, I found that I had more money, but I had no time because I was working all the time. Like even when I was at home, uh, when I was at NCIX, I put in a lot of hours off the clock just because that was the demand. Honestly, that was just the demands of the job between product management, um, the PC division and uh, making videos for them as well. Um, so all of a sudden I started to see more value in just like, you know, getting a good one in the first place and not having to tinker with it. And it's just kind of a different mindset. Like everyone is at their own stage, or in there, so you could see it as kind of like a like a spectrum. Um, uh, Bart MC Bert over on Float Plane says, "Yeah, overclocking is fun until you uh, see blue smoke." Yeah, exactly. I've actually ruined surprisingly little hardware from like performance tuning or overclocking or anything like that. And like you watch me installing a motherboard like this and go, oh, "Really?" I find that hard to believe, but uh, yeah, no, surprisingly little. Um, let's just double check, make sure we've got all of our standoffs lined up. That's really important. Hopefully uh, some of y'all watching this as a VOD are going to be following along. So one of the things I find really useful when I'm putting screws into a motherboard is just do a quick sanity count. You know, how many are there supposed to be? You got your one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. All right, there's supposed to be eight. Count out eight screws. And then if you have any extras, well, then you know that you missed one. Not that it really terribly matters. You could put in like two screws in a motherboard and you'd still be all right. So I've counted out six here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do some super chatty chats. I'm going to switch to the overhead, give David's arm a break. Sent me a what, sorry? Okay, great. Um, where would I find that? In Teams. All right, cool. Some of you are asking about the parts list. If you're watching on YouTube, it will be at the link in the video description. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if I have that in the float plane one, and Twitch doesn't have like a link in the video description. So it's over on YouTube. We've got affiliate links for all the parts for this system.
If you're trying to follow along with this build, one thing to watch out for here, guys, is there's two types of screws included with the case. There's the coarsely threaded ones with the hex-shaped heads. Those are 632. Uh, you guys can't really see this, unfortunately, but there's not really much I can do about it. And then there's the M, what are they, M3 or M4? I can never remember if it's M3 or M4. Uh, whatever, the, the finely threaded ones. It just says motherboard SSD screw in the manual. Thank you very much for not just telling me the threading standard. Appreciate that, Cougar. I'm not mad, though. I love Cougar. This is a Cougar, Cougar cases, Cougar cases. I'm a Cougar lover. Wait, hold on. Um, um, uh, uh, okay, uh, the motherboard's installed. Wonderful. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, David. I didn't hello. warn David. Oh, oh, hello there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, install a hard drive, shall we? Yeah, it's been a while. I like installing hard drives. Oh. Well, I strongly suspect that this motherboard does actually include a couple SATA cables and that we just uh, don't have them here because we probably used them and didn't put them back. Yes, wait, two serial ATA data cables, optional. How interesting. So when you see optional in a manual, what it typically means is that it's down to the regional office to decide whether or not to include it. Um, according to you know how they want to position the product and um, ultimately price it. So it is possible that that board does not include SATA cables, but usually they do. So I'm just going to grab a couple from here, and we'll pretend that you bought a motherboard that includes SATA cables. I remember I used to get really mad back in the day when there was no consensus on how to pronounce SATA. I was like, no, we should call it SATA. And I just like really cared for some reason. And I can no longer even remotely understand why I would have cared about that. Uh, are these right angle? Oh, for crying out loud. Well, that's why I'm finding all straight ones, except, or all right angle ones, except this one. Or, no, there's a right angle one. Dang it, do we not organize? What's the point of labeling the front of it right angle or straight if we're not going to actually stick with it? Driving me crazy. All right, so we're going to grab one of our hard drive cages. I'm going to go with the top one. I just kind of tend to prefer the top cage over the bottom cage. It's just one of my one of my things. And oh, that's curious. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it looks like it does go sort of front of the drive towards the uh, side panel that would have a window if we were using a windowed case, and uh, interface towards the back. And then you just have to kind of no. Wait, really? Oh, okay. I thought we were just going to have to kind of, here, look, like kind of peekaboo the interface like down there. But it looks like it does not go in that way. It's actually what I would consider to be backwards, typically. How interesting. Wait, where are the little tabs? I'm actually having kind of a hard time figuring out what's going on here. Hello? Interesting. So, okay. There are spots that are lined up where it looks like you could screw in the drive, like kind of going backwards, which is weird. But then there's little plastic tabs that you would use to put it in what I would consider to be sort of the normal way. So, there you go. Yes. So the interface comes out the back there. And we'll plug in the drive like that. Perfect and beautiful. Thank you, David. Boop. Go ahead and run my SATA cable now. Go ahead and route this puppy up here. Oh, actually, yeah, we can just go ahead and, uh, and plug that in. Man, I remember the first SATA cables. They didn't lock. Um, now there's a couple different locking mechanisms. They can have the little metal latch on them, or they can just have a little like piece inside that kind of helps it grab onto the um, to the SATA connector. But the original ones didn't have the uh, the border around them on the board. They didn't have the lock on the cable itself, and those things came out like 
crazy. It was super annoying. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one in the front. I'm going to bring my second one in the back here if you can yeah, get a close look at what we've got going on here. But ump. There we go. And then I'm going to bring that second one. You're going to be right here, David. Right around there. There we go. It's going to give us a little peeky boo. Uh, all right, this is a little awkward. Um, we accidentally grabbed an SSD before we started shooting that does not have a DRAM cache. And for if I was just grabbing an SSD to put my game library on or something like that, where I feel you know most of the accesses are going to be infrequent and or sequential, I wouldn't even care. DRAM cache, no DRAM cache, whatever. It's going to be faster than a hard drive regardless. But when it comes to pulling OS duty, so if we're actually installing our operating system on it, that is not something that I would particularly recommend. There are cases where a DRAMless SSD um, can perform worse than a hard drive, even though it's solid state. Now, that situation is changing a little bit. In fact, we did a video about a Kyoxia SSD a little while ago, little tiny thing. It's called the BG4 uh, M.2 SSD that has no DRAM cache, but uses, a, a, or has the capability anyway, of using a clever system that allows it to borrow some memory from the, com from the system to use as a cache. That's pretty cool. That could help a lot, but this don't got it. So we need to make sure that we're going something that has a DRAM cache. So that's why I, I relabeled this. Instead of SU650, uh, we have a link down below to the SX850. It's only a few dollars more, and I think it's definitely worth the extra. Here we're using the same threaded screws that we did for the motherboard. So these are the finely threaded ones with the circular tops. You got this, David. You just wanted to focus on that beard, didn't you? So beautiful. Aw, thank you. You're totally unbiased, right? I know nothing about what you say. David, David's a beard. He's a beard advocate. He's a beard advocate. Not as much as James. Do you know how many unsolicited messages and like emails I've gotten from James about my beard? <laughs> Why? What does he say? He'll say things like, uh, you know, oh, hey, you've got a... I, I, okay, I noticed you know the, the upper lip's growing a bit a bit too low. You gotta like trim it here, or just he'll send me like a random comment from the from the YouTube comments that's like you should keep the beard. And he's like, I second this motion. Like, <laughs> dang it, <sighs> Nicholas, do you mind grabbing that screw? Sorry. I think it's safe to say that between in-person comments, emails, and like, uh, like IMs, he has sent me at least half a dozen completely unsolicited bits of like <laughs> beard advice or beard encouragement. He is like a he's like like a beard like man. What do you even what do you even call it? Like a, like a like a apostle, you know? Like a, oh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like a beard missionary or like a beard, you know? Yeah, apostle, yeah, apostle's fine. Yeah, apostle. Sure, spread right. the word. Yep. Spreading, spreading the beard gospel. Now, I think I might have made a small mistake. Um, fortunately, usually when a motherboard includes two SATA cables, they include one right angle and one straight. And it looks like we do need a right angle cable in order to plug in this drive. Yes, sir. I should check my phone. Oh. Oh, good. I mean, hi. You seem like you're having fun showing some stuff you're not supposed to be showing. Uh, I have not shown anything that I'm not supposed to be showing. And if I did, I explicitly said not to pay attention to it. Oh, that's cute. Okay, well, I'm having fun to do something I'm not supposed to do, OK? So how much is it going to cost me this time? Ooh, that's an interesting question. So what we're going to do is during the live stream for limited time, limited number of uses, um, it's going to be free shipping on the store. Free so shipping. Minimum $50 order, free shipping. Code is free ship, all capitals. So uh, is that like North America only? No, 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 everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You know how much it costs to ship stuff to like Australia, right? I'll talk to you later. Bye. Have fun, chat. Sorry, what's the code? Free ship, F R E E S H I T, all capitals. 
Okay. That's. Bye bye. Thanks, Nick. Um, code free ship, lttstore.com. Free shipping orders over fifty. It's really easy to put together a card over fifty dollars right now because uh, we actually brought back the elemental shirts, and we're doing a uh, four pack for fifty bucks. So it's like basically with free shipping. That's like. $12 each for just like really nice, soft, comfy shirts that uh, aren't our most popular design, but they definitely look decent. And even with the right angle connector, this isn't going in. This is starting to, this is starting to turn into what looks like it's going to end up being a longer stream. Why is this not clipping on? I don't get it. Hello? 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 There it is. Hey, nice. That is really tight in there. Can you see that? So you can't get the straight cable in there, and you can barely get the right angle in because of the way the drive sits. And uh, so you can see there's a little bit of strain on the connector this way from it pushing on the metal. This is something that could have been a little bit better designed about this case. There's no clearance reason that I can find down here why these couldn't have just been, you know, like four millimeters, five millimeters further out that way to make it so you can put in a straight connector. Um, let's go ahead and get the power supply in now, though. Uh, yes, sir. There's one thing the shipping code won't work on. Oh. The oh, the elemental is not eligible for the shipping code. No. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, well, it goes to show you what I know. Right, because that's already a loss leader. That makes sense. You don't stack your loss leaders. <laughs> See? Business. It's got, some, got some Linus business tips up in here. I mean, I wasn't the one who thought of it. Apparently, Nick was the one uh, protecting us from completely losing our shirts. Pun intended. Hey, I got the chuckle. That's all I needed. That's all the validation that I needed. Now you're part of the problem, not part of the solution, David. I honestly didn't hear what you said, but I'm so socially inept that I have to laugh when other people laugh around me. Really? Yeah. You just feel like compelled to laugh if other people are laughing. Oh, for sure. So I've never been funny to you then. I didn't say that. Ouch. You're the funniest Linus I know. Dang. All right. Well, you know what? That's fine. I'll take it. For power supply, we're going with an EVGA. Wow, the most generic thing probably in their entire product lineup, 400 watt power supply. They apparently didn't even have the budget on this one to submit it for 80 plus certification. Um, the one positive thing I can say about it is that it's EVGA, so it can't be that bad. You know, I remember getting an irate um, email. I think it was from Corsair. To be clear, this was like ages ago, like nobody working there now would have had anything to do with this. But uh, I remember saying that in one of my videos. It's like, yeah, it's Corsair, so it can't be that bad. And they were like, uh, 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 really? And, the, uh, and I'm like, no, I mean, that in like a, I mean that in like a positive way. I really do. Like, what's wrong with that? If anything, to me, that's like a, that's a positive. What do you think, David? Is that a positive? I, I'm focused on focusing. Like, it's a Linus Tech Tips video. It can't be that bad. Oh, no. Yeah, see, that's like, is that a positive thing or like a, a, a bad thing? It's a positive thing. You think it's positive, all right. You sure you're not just laughing along? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going with a bottom mounted fan just because, again, like budget cases, man, I love them these days. We've got a filtered intake on the bottom. We've got raised feet, so there's gonna be enough room. Even on like a, a medium pile carpet, I think you'll still get enough airflow to your power supply there. So I always prefer to have the power supply draw fresh air from the outside when it can. And then we're using, this time, the 632 screws. Give me a look at that screw. Well, I just uh, check and see who's blowing up my phone. Nothing important. All right, perfect. It's a thing. It's like when you're popular like me, you know, it's hard to live stream because people are interrupting you. You know, it's a funny thing because um, I never really in my life like even having millions of followers on social media, I've never in my life thought of myself as popular. 
because growing up, I was the farthest thing from it. And the thing about social media is that um, it's really easy for all the people um, paying attention to you to start to look like just kind of like a number. Like it, um, especially with how your reach is so algorithmically driven these days rather than driven by the actual number of people that supposedly follow you on Twitter or are subscribed to you on YouTube. Like that number becomes so decoupled from the reality of how many people are actually watching that it just becomes like this number that you're just, you know, it's like a game you're playing almost. You're just trying to like increase the number. Um, and it wasn't until I started live streaming more that I started thinking like, oh no, these are like people that are, are actually like out there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like 100,000 even is just this unfathomable number. Like how many people are, are watching this stream right now? Let me have a look. There are 24,000 people watching this on YouTube alone. There's probably another 1,500 or 2,000 on Twitch. I don't have the counter up, but it's usually around there. Um, there's hundreds more on Floatplane. Um, so to me, it's like that is, you know, 15 times the total population of my high school. Just like hanging out and like, yeah, let's like build a computer. It's going to be like good value or whatever. Um, and as long as I was just sort of like shouting into a void, like just uploading videos, comments seem so much more disembodied. I can see when I first got into live streaming, I was just doing Q and A's in my kitchen. And the only reason I did it was because I was like, okay, to be, we're putting in the 24 pin connector here, by the way, guys, it's keyed on the one side. You just kind of pop it in right here. Uh, if you can get close up of that. Um, the only real reason that I did it in the first place was because Linus Media Group as a company to be taken seriously, I felt we were going to need to have some kind of live presence. And so I wanted to make sure that when the time came that it was going to become apparent that live, you know, mattered all of a sudden, we weren't starting from zero. So I was like, okay, we need to have some kind of live offering. It was the only reason I really did it. Um, now I do it as much for fun as anything else. Like I was game streaming last night just because like, yeah, sure, why not? Whatever, who cares? I can't do that kind of stuff on the LTT YouTube channel because it'll damage it algorithmically. But um, yeah, on Twitch and Flowplane, I uh, actually live stream reasonably regularly. Up here, we're doing our four plus four pin connector. So these separate in case you've got a four pin motherboard. Those are pretty uncommon these days, but sometimes you see a supplementary four pin. So an eight plus a four. Not here, we just need an eight pin. We're gonna go ahead and plug that into the top corner. I always like running my cable management up the back of the motherboard tray for this puppy. So you can actually see how I've got the 24 pin and the eight pin routed now. Uh, even though again, this is like a pretty value oriented case. We've got these little loops built in here and here. Oh, these are interesting ones. They're actually like a three-way loop. Oh, here, here, you can get a good look at this one. So instead of just one way, they've got kind of three prongs, so you can put a zip tie through it three different ways, depending on uh, how you've got the cable running. I really like that. That's a, that's a good idea, Cougar. I have not, uh, I've not seen that before. Cool. Now we've just got a couple more cables to run. I'm a little worried. Thankfully, it looks like EVGA has gone for these relatively uh, short, uh, low-profile SATA connectors, particularly um, uh, the earlier ones. Used to be quite a bit longer, and I was a little bit worried we weren't going to be able to plug into that SSD, but I think it's going to be okay. So we're going to run this up through that same cable management hole for the data cable, and I'm going to get this turned around so you can get a better look. We're going to pop that into the back of our drive. Can you see that all right? Oh, yeah. Uh, good, because I sure can't. I'm at a bit of a weird angle here. so it's keyed so it only goes in one way. Just look carefully at it. You shouldn't have any problems. Pop that on there and we should be good to go, hopefully. Does that go into the thing? Did we make it? Um, hmm. I don't know. Oh yeah. It's in. We got it. We did it. I don't know what happened to the screws that were screwed into the front of this. Fortunately, there's a couple there so I can match those up. Let's go ahead and pop that on there. I am going to confess, I do not fully understand how this mounting mechanism works. 
Oh, no, I get it now. So there's two little nubbins on the bottom here, and then those nubbins go into these holes, which keeps these back ones from slipping out. I get it now. This seems over-engineered. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'll say about them. Okay. Ah, uh, where'd those screws go? I gotta find exactly the right ones. I could use other ones, because they're threaded the same, but my OCD will not allow that, and so I need to find exactly the right ones that uh, popped out before. Uh, Darren Chen asks, what is this PC for? This is for anyone out there at home who wants to put together a decent little gaming box for 500 bucks and change to follow along at home, have some fun building the computer, have some fun playing Vidya games when they're done. That's who it's for. That is a weird mount. I don't like it. I've decided I don't like this SSD mount. I think it's, I think it's over, over complicated. All right. Now the last power connector that we need to do for our drives is this puppy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug SATA power into the back of the hard drive. Can you see that all right? Yep. So once again, it's keyed, it only goes in one way. Boop. And this guy. Ooh, that's a, whew, that's an unfortunate meatball. Okay, one small design. I don't know if I wanna call it a flaw, but I'll definitely call it a thing to consider, is that the front of this case is clear, which means that if you just jam your extra cables into the front of the case, uh, you can't really oh, you can't really see it because of the f reflections too well, but like they're there, they're there, they're cabley, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna have to give a little bit more thought to how I want to hide these cables that I'm not using. I think if I jam them under the hard drive cage, I should be in better shape. Ah, yes, lttstore.com. Uh, code free ship. We're doing free worldwide shipping right now, apparently, um, just during the stream. That's really fortunate because when Nick runs these promos, it helps him hit his, um, his revenue KPIs, but it does not help us make money, which is what I mostly care about from a company standpoint. And you should too. Why are you laughing, David? You're laughing along again. If we don't make money, how do I pay people? Okay. If Nick is giving away all the company money, you know, on shirts and water bottles, how will Nicholas get his paycheck? Because let's face it, we'd keep David. <laughs> Just kidding, Nicholas. You're doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. I love you, Nick. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. I mean, at this point, that Nicholas costs us less than the other Nick. If he's giving away all the company money, you know, on free shipping promos. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fairly sure that Nick has some kind of calculation rule that he follows to make it like sort of make sense-ish. Um, I kind of got to talk to him about that though. All right, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of cable management here. I'm gonna run my three-pin fan connector um, somewhere. Let's see. Let me give this a little bit of thought. Oh bloody hell! I've got a bent pin on the motherboard. If the last stream is anything to go by, it's probably my fault, so I'm not going to blame ASRock. Um, oh, wow. There's, okay, that's one thing we're compromising on this lower end board. There's not a ton of fan connectors. Oh, I didn't see these ones. Okay, yeah, we good. Oh, we good. Okay. That's awesome. So my fan connector is going to come up right here. Get some of that nice, fine cable management and plug that right there. All right. Boom. Not too shabby. I ran my graphics card out through the same one here because the graphics card is eventually going to be right there and it's going to not have any strain on it. Um, other things that I did just now, I uh, undid the management straps on the front I.O. connectors. So we're going to go ahead and run those now. We've got front USB 2 and audio. These are kind of joined together, but that's okay. You can just separate them as much as you need. I'm going to run that one 
I'm gonna run that one under. I'm going under. That's how we're folding things down. Actually, we're gonna go all the way to this far corner here with this one. Oh yeah. And we're gonna regret it immediately. Hold on, give me a sec. We are not gonna regret anything. We have no regrets. We're living that carpe diem lifestyle. Okay, so USB has got to reach around here. Oh, that is really tight. Okay, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but because of that drive mount that, again, I can't stress enough, I would have preferred to have a little bit more towards the, the panel here. Um, that is a really tight fit to get that front panel connector in there, but I got it. And then, uh, don't miss the PC Build Triathlon, guys, especially if you're someone like me with small hands and you'd like to find, you know, just something, anything that we can point at and say, hey, yeah, you know, we are, we have an evolutionary advantage for this. <laughs> Fitting little tiny cables into tight spaces, that's, uh, hey, that's our specialty. Uh, yeah, I'll have a look at Super Chats in a bit here. We're going to run our front USB 3 up right here. Boop. And we've got one of those connectors right here. That's one thing that is missing on a budget board like this is like a type C front panel connector. But you also only really find that on the more expensive cases anyway. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't actually have a lot of stuff that I would plug into the front of a computer with type C. Do you? Yeah, it's nice to charge your phone faster. OK, I could see that. That's what wireless charging is for. Faster. Yeah, but also, I mean, if you want to charge your phone faster, couldn't you just have like a wall wart by your desk? That's like cable management, yo. Cable management, yeah. Mm, yeah. Drives. Like external data, sometimes it's external nice drives. You have Type C external drives. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. But you're a media professional, so that's like something to bear in mind. I think for a lot of people, probably not as much. Okay, so fine, David. You can go pay the extra for a motherboard with a Type C connector. You go get a B550 board. Okay, you go get a fancy case. For everyone else, there's Type A still. Um, Nick would like you to remind people that it's a $50 Oh, uh, Nick would like me to remind people that the free shipping code is orders of $50 and more. So you actually, you can't just buy like one thing of cable ties and ship it to like Slovakia and uh, and then uh, have it the free shipping be free. That would actually be like a net like 40 plus dollar loss or whatever. Uh, but like I cannot, absolutely cannot do that. Uh, let me have a look here. So power LED is the top one. Okay, this is another thing. This is my this is my tiny hand superpower. Watch how quickly I can plug in front panel connectors. Ooh. Reset. Uh. Power. Your sarcasm is uh, deserved, but not appreciated. Once again, I didn't bother to plug my front stuff in. What? Just the power button. Just power button? You didn't yeah. even plug the other ones in? No, why? What? Why? Because it's, it's, otherwise the lights won't I come don't up. I need lights. Is my computer on? Oh, David. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Have you seen my sausage hands? Do you think I can get inside there? I hate it so much. After all that talk about, oh wow, this is really not done. Um, after all my talk about putting the right screws in here, I actually put in the wrong ones. There are some um, self-tappers that are supposed to be in there. I accidentally just put in hard drive screws. Derp. And now I've probably like completely destroyed the threads from the self-tappers from last time. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. I'm still putting them back in. Dang it. And people often ask, hey, Linus, why don't you guys start like a PC building company? And then we could just buy systems made by, you know, you guys. Do you really want one? I mean, this, this is okay. It's decent. But uh, just, you know, I say, I say leave PC building to the professionals, you know? Go, go, go to the Origin PC or Puget or, you know, whatever. Definitely not this guy. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Feel says, uh, free ship discount code isn't valid for the items in your cart. Yes, it's not valid for the elemental bundle. So you might have to get a water bottle or a stealth hoodie or whatever the case may be. Graphics, here we are. We went Zotac, we went with a 1650 Super. It's a great budget card for the money. Just requires a six pin connector, it's super small. So if you don't have a large case like this one, I guess, yeah, calling this a large case is sort of uh, an overstatement, but uh, it, is a, it is a MATX case. Um, but if you have even like an ITX case or like a super compact one, you can fit this thing in no problem. It's a pretty solid cooler for, um, for an entry, entry level, you know, what I would consider to be like entry level, but still performance, like still gaming. All right. Time to plug our graphics card into the motherboard. So I'm just gonna line up our top piece of express. Oh. Oh, I did the thing. I accidentally popped out one that I don't need and now it's just gonna be like a gaping hole in the back of the computer. Womp, 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 womp. That's a shame. Is that a, uh, is that like trombone sound, like copyright? Like, are you allowed to do that? You're allowed to do it. You're allowed to do that? Okay. I, I allow it. I don't know, you never, well, thanks, David. <laughs> I'm sure glad. David, the authority on like what series of tones you're allowed to to play and which ones you're not. Just as long as you don't make that sound and then say, let's get ready to blank. Okay, are you allowed to say the words as long as you don't say it in like his trademark tone of voice? I don't know. I actually I actually don't know how it works. Man, if I was smart, I would trademark like dropping stuff. And then, uh, yeah, and then people could like, like even if they do it accidentally, I could be like, hey, look, prove it was accidental. Cause you can't. Cause people don't believe me when I say it's accidental, so. This is one of those funny ones. Apparently it is enough of a cost savings to take this piece here, bend it out, and then create a separate piece with one, two, three, four. Oh man, I'm not actually 100% sure how they do this one. This must be stamped for uh, this one right here rather than bent. So one, two, three, four bends, and then have someone screw it in later. It's like fascinating. It's been actually a long time since I've sat down with a case product manager and been like, hey, you know, why do you guys do it this way versus that way? So compared to having a more complex back panel, um, it's apparently cheaper to do it this way. You see it on a lot of the budget cases. All right. Let's go ahead and plug in our six pin connector to the back of the graphics card. Here we've got um, an, uh, a six plus two and then a dedicated six pin. This kind of comes down aesthetically to what you prefer. You know, if you like to have the, the six pin plugged in here, and then you like to uh, cable manage the extra one sort of back here like that, I generally prefer it that way versus if you want to have the other connector just kind of hang in here and plug in the, the end one. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like it this way better because then you can take a cable tie like this one, lttstore.com. <clears throat> and I'll just pop that on there and it kind of kind of hides it a little bit, I think. Makes it not look as bad. Available in orange and white. <laughs> oh, lttstore.com. We didn't intend to create you as a meme. It just sort of happened. Oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna grab onto the 24 pin with this. We'll just kinda tighten those up against each other. I'm a firm believer that like a tightly wrapped anything looks better than like nothing. So, you know, hey there, that's not bad, right? What do you think, David? It's okay. Can I get, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair, I deserve it. I deserve it. All right, let's go ahead and take advantage of these cool 
uh, cable tie loops that I pointed out before. I would, you know what would be really cool? I don't know how on earth we would coordinate this, but like, can you imagine doing a live stream like this, except we pre-announce ahead of time what the components are gonna be so that people can buy them ahead of time and like, we can actually all build the computer together. How many people need to build a computer at one time though? So that is the problem, because we actually did this once, um, but in person. Oh. So NCIX, I think we did it twice, not once. Uh, we called it the PC building workshop or something like that. And if you, if you happen to be building a computer like at this time and you happen to be available on this day, there was like, it was either a small additional cost or it was you pay the assembly fee, but we don't assemble it. But you can attend this workshop where I would sit and like, build a computer at the front of the room like a class and like show everyone and then go around and like help them with the weird idiosyncrasies of whatever hardware they had. It was a ton of fun. It was like actually a total blast. It was kind of like a computer building party except I got paid to be there. Um, but like you said, it's a lot of stars to align. Like, you know, everyone happens to need a computer and happens to be available on this day and happens to like want to do this even. Let's go ahead and pop the panel on. Not both panels, that's bad GBs. We're just gonna do the one panel. I should probably also pay a little bit of attention to chat. What are the specs for this build? Uh, we've got them linked in the video description on YouTube, but it's a Ryzen 3 3100. Uh, we've got, I believe it's eight gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz. Yeah, eight gigs of RAM. We've got a 1650 Super uh, ASRock uh, MATX board, decent little board, uh, pretty inexpensive, but not too many compromises. It's not one of those ones where you're like, oh yeah, you know, you've got two RAM slots on great, you know, no upgradability or whatever the case may be. Um, this is a Cougar, what is this thing? MG120 case. We've got an EVGA. They don't even have like a, a, a lineup for it, as far as I can tell. Like it's not B or G, it's just 400. EVGA 400 watt, okay? Part number 100-N1-0400-L1. That's it. It's as close to a generic power supply as EVGA is ever likely to make. Uh, what else did we throw in here? We've got an SSD that I um, <clears throat> uh, uh, creatively renamed. So the link doesn't match the actual one that we put in, but I don't recommend the one that we actually put in. So we put in a link for one that's uh, a little bit more sensible. We threw in a one terabyte hard drive, just in case you've got a, a big game library you wanna install. Well, just in case you've got a modest game library these days and you wanna install, you know, five or six games. Yeah, isn't COD like over 200 gigs? Uh, it's 170. 170. There you go. So you could install uh, the latest COD and then like, well, wait, uh, Doom Eternal, isn't Doom Eternal over 100 gigs? Maybe, I'm sorry. I think it might be. Uh, so you can install like latest COD, Doom Eternal, and then like Battlefield. Battlefield. Yeah, that's another really big one. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption is like 150 gigs, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you could install like half a dozen Triple-A titles, you know. Isn't that, isn't that ridiculous? I mean, I love it. Give me, give me that visual fidelity for sure. But, uh, I mean, you know, I still remember back when it felt crazy that a game came on five CDs. Yeah. Far Cry 1, baby. I still have my Far Cry 1 CDs. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and fire this puppy up. So what do you think? First time post? Oh yeah. Oh wow, not too shabby. It's like you've done this before. It's almost like I've done this before. Well, yeah, but I've done this before enough times to know that <laughs> it actually is not, not a guarantee that it's gonna post the first time. All right, so all we're really gonna alter in here 
is uh, loading our XMP profile, DDR4 3200, increasing our uh, voltage a little bit, tightening up the timings a little bit. And hopefully that works. One thing to note, guys, is with these B450 boards, if you're using a third gen Ryzen, there is a solid chance that because of limitations to how much data they can actually store on the board itself, um, there's a strong possibility that you'll have to put a first or second gen Ryzen chip in, flash the BIOS for third gen compatibility, and then put your third gen chip in. Now, we obviously did that preparation ahead of time, but you can't take that for granted. And we made it to the desktop. All right. So what shall we do first? Just like a good old Cinebench R20, make sure everything's working? What do you think? Yeah. Oh, we need a network connection. Oh, boy. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, yeah, sure. I will take that. Do you remember which one is hooked up? I don't think both of them are. Well, we'll find out soon enough. In the meantime, we can start our Cinebench run. Nice. It is still so impressive to me how much CPU you can get for like a hundred over dollars. Like remember when we were stuck with high end quad cores? Do you remember that? Because I remember that. Those were days. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it weren't actually even that long ago, unfortunately. Okay, go ahead and uh, grab that for a second. All right. Awesome. Whoops. So yeah, OK, 2,300 points. Yeah, that's not a ton. But uh, if you look at what it's comparable to, like we're right up there. As we said in our review, we're right up there with a 7,700K, which not that long ago was considered you know, an a overclockable enthusiast gaming processor. So. Personally, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the improvement. All right, so here, in a fairly demanding scenario, we're looking at anywhere from 75 to 85 FPS. This is on high. And I remember when you could only turn on like soft shadows and stuff like this on super, super high-end hardware, where your graphics card alone cost 500 plus dollars. Meanwhile, we got this like tiny pinner little thing over here, spitting out 60 plus FPS in a game looking like this. It's amazing. We managed over 60 FPS in a couple year old, but still AAA title for 500-ish US dollars. Remember guys, I know it's over 500, but you don't, strictly speaking, need the hard drive unless you want to play like very modern, very AAA games with gigantic installers. Uh, thanks for watching and oh yes, of course, the video is also brought to you by our sponsor. Private internet access is a tool that masks your IP address and encrypts traffic to and from your devices. Combined with private browsing tools and safe browsing best practices, it can even make savvy websites think that you are somewhere else. PIA offers reliable service with over 3,000 servers in more than 30 countries, and they've got no bandwidth caps on their service. You can configure your encryption, the internet kill switch prevent it from leaking if you're involuntarily disconnected, and MACE will block requests to known malware and tracking domains altogether. So why wait? Try it out risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. They've got clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux, and you can connect up to 10 devices at once on a single account. We'll have it linked down below.